We need to fundamentally you know, break out of our, our, our heritage and, uh, and change what it means to be human to the point where we have more freedom, more uh, capabilities, and keep expanding uh, uh, human consciousness and understanding of the universe. Transhumanism, which is all about fundamentally uh, changing the human condition. Emil Grofstra is a pioneer of the body hacking scene, a niche group of biohackers that believe augmenting our bodies with implants is the future of human evolution. One of the first adopters of implantable RFID chips in the mid-2000s, Emil started Dangerous Things in 2013, a biohacking business he runs out of his home garage to bring this technology to the masses. After years of selling RFID implants, Emil's using this revenue from Dangerous Things to develop new implantable technologies that go beyond RFID. One of these is the Yuki, a yet-to-be-released prototype that he hopes will change the way society deals with information security by allowing people to carry cryptographic keys within their bodies. This is a full Java card cryptographic platform. It's all contactless. We went to visit Emil as he prepared to go to tour camp, a hacking camp off the coast of Washington, to talk to him about some of his new projects. How was it that you first got into biohacking? A few years ago, um, the, the maker revolution really got started and got underway, and there was a lot of interest in implants, but the, by that time, it was a bit uh, out of control. Like, people were just like, yeah, people are implanting uh, chips, and I can just pull one out of, like, a car key and put that in my hand. And, and no, you can't do that. It's, it's completely, like, not safe to do that. So um, Dangerous Things was kind of a solution to that. Dangerous Things sells RFID implant kits, scalpels, and other tools for people to perform their own installs at home. Emil first implanted himself with an RFID in 2005 because he wanted to get rid of his keys. You know, he'd run out to the car to get a piece of equipment or something, come back with a big heavy server and, ah, damn door, you know, he couldn't get in. So I, I, I looked at the keys and I thought, this is ridiculous. I just wanted the door to recognize that it was me. That was it, I was happy. I was using it to get in my office, but uh, I sent some pictures to a friend and then he like uploaded them to like a blog. I think it was Boing Boing or something. and and just exploded. Despite his success, the market has stayed pretty small, a community consisting mostly of body modifiers, hackers, and enthusiasts. And with kits priced at under $100 a piece, it can be hard for Emil to stay afloat. Dangerous Things is his full-time job. So how, so you have seven orders you're fulfilling here, yeah. so total, how much did all of these sell for? Oh, um, I know that there's a couple XEMs in there, there's a couple XNTs, so that's, that's a few hundred bucks. You know, we try to uh, make it cost effective for people. There are a couple other places that are selling implantables, but they're selling them at such a low cost that I'm concerned about, like, are they actually implementing all the checks? Are they doing the right thing? And, and uh, making sure that they're manufacturing clean room assembly, and are they doing tests on them? I think at this point, I've probably recovered the R&D costs, um, so now we're into funding other development. So most of the revenue goes right back into R&D and development. Developing future implants is dangerous things focus right now, but it's a business. Emil still needs to leave his garage, get out in the world, and market the current products he has for sale. What's happening Thursday? So Thursday, we're going to Tour Camp, which is an American hacker camp, and it only happens every two years. One of the things that's happening is I'm going to be giving away uh, XNT installs. When it comes to like really expanding the use uh, case and usability of this technology in general, go to a hacker camp, give them the technology for free, and see what they do with it. That's really what it's all about. I 
lot of stuff in here. What's all in here? <laughs> So we just boarded the ferry on our way to tour camp. This year is being held on Orcas Island, which is one of the San Juan Islands between Canada and Washington. Uh, of all the places to hold a hacker conference, you can't really think of a better place than an island, I guess. Tour camp, so what do you guys think of this new venue? And then we also have the implantation station back this year. So this is Amos Station, where he'll be implanting uh, chips into campgoers. So uh, just, we've been open in just a couple minutes. We already have our first customer here. What made you uh, decide to get this? Oh, well, I mean, I work for a science museum, so I feel it's like, it's kind of like, it's almost kind of required to, <laughs> to try, try new things, not think about it too hard. Are you okay with needles, or...? I mean, as okay as anyone can be. <laughs> All right. Deep breath in. And out. Yeah. What'd it feel like? Uh, like a needle jabbing into my skin. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you use your tag for? Job hunting. So I go to, like, uh, security conferences, and, and, and when they ask for my resume, I just scan my, their phone on my hand, and, what does your family think? Do they know that you have an <laughs> implant? Uh, my wife wasn't initially happy, but she pretty much forgot about it. But you get some very uh, awkward looks and conversations from it. <laughs> so. Aside from traveling to secluded hacker camps, Amel's mission remains to push R&D for new implantable technologies that have far greater applications beyond opening doors or storing resumes. The trigger should be unlocked, but... Uh... And then when I authenticate, now. Unlike his biohacking competitors, Amel's hoping that implantable tech will change the way we deal with issues of privacy and security. In the most layman's way possible, what is the Yuki? Essentially, it's a very small, security-oriented computer. The Yuki is a Java card, contactless NFC platform implanted in the body. This allows users to carry cryptographic keys within their bodies, as opposed to on external internet-connected devices, merging a person's digital and physical identity. Unlike other implants, Yuki allows for developers to create applications for the platform, things like secure payment and encryption. The, the ability for you to own your identity uh, versus Facebook owning it is, is all comes down to the uh, cryptography, being able to say, this transaction was actually uh, implemented or, or done by me. With Yuki, you can actually sign your messages. You can actually cryptographically prove, yes, this was me who did this thing. The future version is going to look a lot different. The future version is going to look similar to this. It's going to be probably a bit wider and a bit longer, but similar to this, yeah. And same material? Same material. These are the applications that can be installed on Yuki. So we have PGP and OTP. Uh, those are the applications currently installed on my prototype, but we also have uh, different Bitcoin wallets, uh, Entry Wallet, Ledger Unplug. I feel like we, especially when talking about the Yuki prototype, keeps coming back to one thing, which is us handing over all this information to these huge companies. So typically, when somebody's trying to hack your system to get at private keys, they are going to hack where you're storing those private keys. That's typically your computer or your Android phone or something like that. And any bad actor that gets your access information can pretend to be you and send a message or transfer money. But if you set up this cryptographic proof, you've physically secured them. You can't lose it, and it's very difficult to steal. But I think probably the killer app for something like Yuki is going to be payments and transit. And so when you think about you know, the ability to get rid of your keys, and get rid of your wallet. Now you're talking about something that the average person can get behind. Even with the expanded capabilities of Yuki, Amos remained realistic about one thing. 
The real hurdle for a wider adoption of human augmentation via implants is simply people's repulsion to implanting a device beneath their skin. It's just the general fear uh, of the unknown, right? They don't know how the technology works, so fear is the natural response. I'm hoping that the, the, the visceral reaction to, to our technology and what we're doing is, uh, is because it's an indication that it's a, it's a game changer. Mainstream adoption, at least for the foreseeable future, isn't necessarily Emil's end goal. Despite this, he remains steadfast that, at some point, society, not to mention regulation, will catch up. In the meantime, he's going to keep pushing R&D from his Mount Vernon garage. The bottom line is, for, for Dangerous Things, the kind of the mission statement is, we believe that biohacking is the next form or phase of human evolution. And my belief is that a really well-designed technology that's implanted it has no management, it just kind of disappears. You're standing there now and your kidneys are working hard, but you're not even thinking about it. Your heart is pumping, you're not even conscious of it. These technologies are exactly like that. They're just there, they do their jobs, they do them well, and I don't really think about it to the point that they've, they've just become part of me and who I am. <laughs>